The nation remembers the late His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. UAE marks World Humanitarian Day. And flash flooding in Pennsylvania leaves three dead. This is Seven National News. In our top story this evening, the nation remembered the late father of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, over the weekend. The country is where it is today due to his visionary leadership. In a span of more than three decades, major transitions across all sectors have changed and improved the lives of all Emirati and expatriate residents. Seven National News spoke with some residents to find out what the nation's father means to them. The flag of the UAE waving high at Union House is a constant reminder of many milestones. The perseverance of a population that led to becoming a country. The hardship overcame by vision. The progress that defied challenges. All these started with the man who dreamed, the late father of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. I've been here since uh, 1978 and uh, late Sheikh Zayed and Sheikh Rashid have been my idols. You know, I mean, uh, if I have seen good leaders in the world, they were, they were the good leaders. Luckily, their children, Sheikh Mohammed and uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and uh, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa, they are following the same suit and they are going in the same direction, which I am happy about. He said, on land and in the sea, our forefathers lived and survived in this environment. They were able to do so because they recognized the need to conserve it, to take from it only what they needed to live, and to preserve it for succeeding generations. Compared to the vast desert that the UAE once was, there is now greenery everywhere, sanctuaries for animals, falconry is on the UNESCO's World Heritage List, and across the country are numerous environment-friendly drives engaging all residents. All these developments continue to attract people to come, live, and work in the UAE. These last 35 years have been the most 35 uh, beautiful years of my life because I got everything here. When I came here, I was just a little boy, and to me, Sheikh Zayed and the other rulers of Dubai, it means everything. I've never, he I have never seen or I've never met such a mm, generous man in my whole life. I've been to many countries. Believe me, what I'm telling you is a straightforward. I'm, Sheikh Zayed was the best person, I, the best ruler, I mean, I've ever met. He, has been, he was very kind to his people and to the expatriate as well, very generous. He also said Islam affords women their rightful status and encourages them to work in all sectors as long as they are afforded appropriate respect. Nowadays, local women are armed with university degrees and are holding important positions in the community as well as the government. He had a vision. His vision was for locals to have the best life he he made um, he gave chances especially to women. He he took care of them, and uh, he gave opportunities to them to for, for them to work, learn. Uh, for me as a person, I uh, I, um, I was a student on his scholarship, so I'm very grateful. It isn't only those who are at the prime of their lives who have memories to cherish and stories to tell. Children themselves, though young understand and speak of him with pride. I think uh, is, uh, Sheikh Zayed is a good man and very good man. I proud to uh, like his, uh, our Sheikh, like he let him out a nice place for our, like for Arabic. Like he didn't like some people to, like, uh, to live in apartment, like he did a house for them. And like we are too much proud of, uh, because he's our sheikh. And like we are too much missing him and we love him too much. We as locals, we should be grateful and return those favors. Um, we, try, uh, we should um, try to um, remember, um, uh, remind our children and grandchildren and for the uh, generations to come of his greatness and tell them about him so his memory can live on. 
The UAE in the last four decades made leaps and bounds in education, agriculture, tourism and business. Looking back, the reality we are living in at present seems like a not-so-distant dream, realized in a short time. Come December 2nd, the nation will celebrate its 40th year of becoming united. Annually, the nation will mark the late President His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan's death anniversary on Ramadan 19. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. The Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, received His Highness Sheikh Tahnoun bin Mohammed Al Nahyan, the ruler's representative in the eastern region, along with a number of Islamic scholars. With the scholars, Sheikh Mohammed discussed a number of topics on the teachings of Islam and the duties of Muslims during the holy month. The academics praised the ruler's International Holy Quran Award initiative, and the ruler received a copy of the End of the World book from its author, Dr. Mohammed Al. Al-Arifi. On the occasion of World Humanitarian Day, which is observed each year on the 19th of August, United Nations officials in the Emirates praised the Red Crescent and local communities on their relief efforts towards Somalia. Dr. Mohamed Diab, the head of UAE's World Food Programme, stated that working conditions in Somalia are defined as high risk, as 14 UN field workers have lost their lives there since 2008, with operations suspended in 2010. Work has now resumed and nine airlifts have so far carried 800 metric tons of food for 1.6 million people a day. In reality, almost 12 million people in the five countries comprising the Horn of Africa are still in need of food assistance. According to published UN reports, out of a total of 2 billion US dollars required for relief work, an appeal is being made to bridge the gap between the 1 billion dollars received so far. We are facing challenges in terms of uh, making the resources uh, available to provide humanitarian assistance to save lives in the field. The United Nations made an appeal uh, uh, for $2.4 billion to respond until the end of this year. What has been pledged until now is $1.3 billion and we are fundraising for $1.1 billion to save lives by the end of the year. Every citizen, every human being around the world can play a role. It's a joint responsibility. Everybody should take a share in saving lives in the Horn of Africa. We have already received a donation World Food Program from Saudi Arabia, $50 million to support our efforts in Somalia. As you know, in famine, people need to eat and to eat a nutrition nutritious food for them be, to be able really to get out of this vicious circle of malnutrition which we are seeing all over Somali region now. This was a preventable disaster. This was a disaster that was slowly moving towards being a crisis. Um, and it is slow onset. Um, it, uh, the drought exacerbated what was going on already in the country of the failing of the systems basically. Um, what UNHCR is doing now is working against the clock to save lives because you need to protect refugees that um, as soon as they cross the border we are catering to the internally displaced inside the country and um, also um, what we are trying to do is give them shelter as soon as they arrive. So uh, there is the reception of refugees and there is uh, finding solutions to refugees who are in dire need. Chinese nationals are playing a key part in Dubai's economic outlook. According to a local paper, various sectors have witnessed growth from Chinese investors, shoppers and tourists, including an extra interest in the high end of the real estate market. Experts say that there, are, that there has been a pickup in the value of transactions with growing interest into Dubai's commercial sector. Analysts also say that Chinese companies take a more long-term view when it comes to office space and tend to buy office floors and buildings rather than leasing individual individual officers. Chief Economist of the Dubai International Financial Center, Dr. Nasser Saidi, stated this week that Chinese companies are coming to Dubai to tap into the African market and expand into Dubai's energy, finance, telecoms and railway projects. 
Home working initiatives for women in the GCC is the key to boosting women in the workforce, according to a new report. The Cass Business School Dubai revealed that 48% of the population are women and 20% make up the workforce. By promoting home working initiatives, GCC women can help boost local economies and nationalisation rates have the potential to add to 30% of the GCC's GDP. The report added that the gap in female employment is not due to a lack of education, as 77% of women achieve university degrees in the UAE. Looking to news abroad now, three people are dead after a flash flood hit Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on Friday. Thunderstorms and heavy rains pummeled cars on roads near the Allegheny River, trapping people in their cars. The area got more than seven centimetres of rain in one hour. Rescue crews used inflatable boats to reach people who were stranded in their cars by the fast-moving storm. Some people had to swim to safety, others stood on the roofs of their cars until help arrived. Officials say the three people killed were all in the same minivan. One person is also said to be missing. And special police and customs forces have delivered Germany's largest blow against the drug trade in the country's history. On Thursday evening, drug enforcement agents seized an unprecedented amount of cocaine. According to media reports, about 100 kilograms of cocaine was confiscated. The drugs were smuggled into Germany by sea from Panama. Police officials stated that seven criminals were arrested, adding that the street value of the cocaine is 45,000 euros per kilogram, totaling 5 million euros for the 100 kilograms seized. Up next we have the day's business news for you so stay with us.